Good afternoon and welcome to Non-Traditional Employment for Women's Equity Awards Luncheon. I'm Melissa Russo from NBC4 New York, and I'm proud to be your host for the first ever web broadcast of News Signature Annual Fundraising Event. For many years, I've joined you as we've gathered together in person to celebrate news accomplishments. And though we can't all be in the same room, through the magic of the internet, we're able to continue acknowledging the tradeswomen and industries that build New York City's skyline and the amazing work of non-traditional employment for women. First and foremost, I hope all of you are well and that your families, friends, and colleagues are safe and healthy. And please know that we share our heartfelt condolences with any of you who may have lost someone to COVID-19 this past year. I especially want to thank our dedicated community of real estate and construction industry professionals and private foundations, our tradeswomen, and of course, all of you watching today for your continued support of NEW. Thank you to our innovator sponsors, including Acom Tishman, the Building Contractors Association, Delta Airlines, J.P. Morgan Chase, Lendlease, LRC Construction, RxR Realty, Siami Construction, and Turner Construction. If you're with us for the first time, we hope you'll find news rich history and ongoing work enlightening and a source of inspiration. It's been more than a year since the COVID-19 pandemic took over our lives and forced us to isolate and close our doors. Many New Yorkers lost their jobs and had to make tough decisions for the sake of their families. And unfortunately, we've seen the weight of those decisions affecting some communities very differently from others. What we know and what new ensures is that what's good for gender and racial equality is also good for our economy and our society as well. And through decades of advocacy and strong relationships, New has increased and influenced opportunities for women to enter what were once exclusionary career tracks. New prepares, trains, places, and provides ongoing support to women for careers in the skilled construction and maintenance trades. New helps them achieve economic independence and a secure future for themselves and their families, while at the same time, New provides a pipeline of qualified workers to the industries that build and maintain New York industries that feature an average annual wage of approximately $67,000, as well as health and retirement benefits and access to a pension. We're excited to share with you today how NEW has been the answer for thousands of women searching for meaningful careers and how NEW will continue to support the growth of our great city. But first, I'm pleased to introduce the president of NEW, Kathleen Colhane. When the pandemic descended upon us, Kathleen and the staff at NEW quickly pivoted to a virtual environment, creating a unique set of tools to support our future tradeswomen. Thank you, Melissa. Welcome to NEW's Equity Awards Luncheon. I'm Kathleen Colhane, president of Non-Traditional Employment for Women. For more than 15 years, we've had lunch together and honored the amazing fortitude of our tradeswomen community. While we miss the opportunity to be with you in person, we are excited to celebrate with you virtually. We are here in New Shop, where our tradeswomen learn the basics of carpentry, electrical work, painting, and so much more. Over 3,000 New York City tradeswomen have trained in this very space. Because of this event and our strong, long-standing partnerships with all of you, we are able to further support tradeswomen to achieve economic independence and a secure future for themselves and their families. This year has been one for the books as a nation, as a community, and as an organization. We've all experienced tremendous hardship and our work is more vital than ever. We have pivoted to a virtual world and while we are doing something unique today to celebrate our honorees, News Mission remains the same to be the model that works for women and for New York City. Today, you will hear from our amazing community of real estate and construction industry leaders and from the women that power, green, and maintain New York. We are so grateful and humbled for your continued support. Thank you. My name is Oren Snyder, uh, born and raised in New York, and I was there at the moment of conception of non-traditional employment for women. Lola Snyder is my mother. Um, may she rest in peace. Uh, tragically died 27 years ago, but before she died, 
At a relatively young age, she was the co-founder of Non-Traditional Employment for Women. And so I had a front row seat um, to the formation and evolution of the organization from its founding in 1978 until her death in 1994. My mother and Mary Ellen Boyd, looking at the landscape and being part of the feminist movement themselves, thought that it would be a good idea to focus on women in particular and finding professions for women where they can earn something other than minimum wage. I think in the mid-70s, although women comprised 50% of the workforce by then, they were earning, I think, 30 cents on the dollar and confined to about 22 different professions across the United States and essentially barred from the highest paying blue collar jobs. And that meant the trades, construction. And in New York, of course, those jobs were the most lucrative for what then was called blue collar workers. But women were not um, allowed into those jobs. And if you couldn't be an apprentice, you couldn't be a carpenter, you couldn't be a welder, you couldn't be a plumber. So this organization, which was not yet called Non-Traditional Employment for Women, had to figure out how are they gonna find women to do this? How are they gonna train them to be uh, ready for an apprenticeship program? And a lot of their earliest students were women who had never been in the employment um, market at all. So 1978 Non-Traditional Employment for Women was founded as a freestanding organization and they got to work. And so what I remember most about my mother's time here is that it was all about love. I mean, she loved each of these students like she loved her children. And she gave a lot of them something that they had never had up to that point in their life, which was a home and knew was basically a halfway house for women in addition to an employment resource center. They just came here and they congregated here. Sometimes they would just show up and hang out because this was a home for them. And I think that if the organization meant one thing to her, it was making people feel special and loved. And what better way to do that than to find them jobs where they can find empowerment, they can find autonomy, they can find independence, of course, financial independence. And I do remember a number of women who once they got high paying jobs, were able to change their lives in fundamental ways. And my mom was very proud of that. And I'm so happy to see the organization still here and thriving. New means hope, opportunity, another chance. It means a career, retirement, leadership. It means everything to me, it's my roots. New is my roots. New means so many things to me. It means family. It means community. It, mean, it means possibility. It means accomplishment. And it means goals achieved. New means an uh, alliance, a network, uh, another supportive system in place to help you, help you get where you need to be, to help you progress. It's a foundation. Just for starters, it makes a difference. It makes a difference in the lives of the women that we support and help so that we can change their lives for the better. It makes a difference in the industry that I love so much called construction, where we need to replenish our workforce, we need to replenish our professional staff, and new plays such a vital role from end to end when it comes to construction. It's workforce development, and it makes you feel good because when you see what these women are able to accomplish and make such a difference in the work they do, we're a better, we're a better industry. New means to me a world where a woman and girls aspirationally uh, can create a life for themselves that they lead, free from stereotypes and some of the incorrect norms that we've seen heretofore, and literally build the world around her. New means that women um, who are looking for opportunities can get those opportunities. New is um, a vehicle in which women who are looking for ways to better their lives, um, looking to better their families' lives, get these great opportunities to become tradeswomen, 
uh, to have uh, health insurance, to get a pension, and to look for uh, lifelong dreams and goals. We're at the part of the program that I know you've all been looking forward to. This is the time where we ask you to please give generously to new. And I am going to match dollar for dollar the first $10,000 that you contribute today. Please give generously to help further the vision and mission that my mother and Mary Ellen Boyd launched 43 years ago. Thank you very much. Thank you, Warren, for keeping New's traditional hard hat appeal alive and for your generous $10,000 matching gift challenge. If you would like to make a donation in support of Orin's challenge, simply scan the QR code that you see on your screen throughout the broadcast. It's because of your generosity today that New will continue to support women entering the building and construction trades. New is proud to empower them to share their stories. My name is Chantalia De Faria, and I work at Penn Station. I'm a first year elevator apprentice with Local One. I found out about New about 10 years ago. I was waitressing, and the counter people or customers are usually the most difficult. And this one regular, I remember what he used to order. He wanted a bagel with butter on one side and a coffee light and sweet. And I knew his order by heart. And he used to always say to me that I should do construction because I've always been a little rough around the edges. And then I didn't know, like, I had no idea about oh, even a woman in construction or doing anything like that. And I just used to ignore him. And he always told me, like, you should go to New. You should go to New. You can do so much better than what you're doing here. And that was 10 years ago. I had two jobs in one company until I was about eight months pregnant. And I got laid off a few weeks before my maternity leave. And I had the baby, I had unemployment for a little while, and I, I'm like, okay, um, what do I do now? And I remember the guy telling me about New, and I was like, you know what? I walked in here just one random day in the city and I asked information and I took a test, I passed and I scheduled it from there. I started new, the program when I believe my newborn was about two months old. Being a new mom, it was challenging. That was one of the most intimidating things. So it was very challenging. I have wonderful supports, new make sure that you have those supports in place. They help you with any extra support you may need to put things into place for employment, for starting the program. Um, I remember days, yeah, waking up very early, about 3.30, similar to now, and getting my newborn dressed so he could go to daycare and coming here. When the pandemic first started in March, I went on quarantine with the rest of the world. It drove me nuts. And New helped me in a number of ways. Because again, I wasn't employed when I went into quarantine. I kind of had to stop with the rest of the world. Um, when I got the call from Local One, I needed help to prepare for work, to buy PPE, to buy equipment, to buy uniform and clothing to wear to work, and they significantly helped me with that. If it wasn't for them, I don't, again, I don't know how I would have left quarantine and started in the elevator industry, but the job they provided and the extra assistance they provided me, it meant a world of difference in my situation. The best part of my job is keeping the city running, kind of. Penn Station is a huge place, and I, I help with that. I'm a part of that. Actually, when I started, the new Moynihan train hall was where I was sent to first, and they were on a deadline, like a month before they finished. That's when I started there. 
And to see the amazing transition from finishing and we got to see videos of how they build. And I helped build, I helped work on some of those units. Those are my company's escalators that are there. Those are my company's elevators that are in Moynihan Train Hall. And I got to be a part of that. I remember taking the painter in the elevator shaft to paint the shafts white. They have really cool LED lights and the shafts are white. And I was a part of that and I helped with that. And I helped keep things running every day. That was an incredible story and just amazing to hear how Chantalia triumphed in the face of adversity. This past year has been so difficult for many, and so it's inspiring to hear how New continued to support tradeswomen in their times of need, from providing tools, boots, covering union dues, to cash assistance for tradeswomen facing housing inequities and food insecurity. New has remained open and available throughout the pandemic. New believes that equitable opportunities for tradeswomen means increasing the stability and efficiency of long-term construction. Initiatives such as New's Signature Project Program increases the placement of tradeswomen on construction projects through diversity goal setting with owners and contractors. The new Signature Projects program, now over a decade old and over 60 projects throughout our great city, means that tradeswomen have opportunities not only to work on helping build our great city, but also to advance in their trade, get time on their tools, be on a project where there's a number of women, tradeswomen, women that run construction projects, like a number of our new ambassador council members, and also they help open up opportunities for the next generation. The, the, the signature project makes such a big difference because if we didn't have a signature project, the, the likelihood is that we would have about a 3% outcome, maybe 5% on a project. But with the intentional act of a signature project, where the commitment of a client and the builder, the sub and labor for that project, we can have outcomes as high as 17%, which we have achieved through signature projects. I know at Turner, one of the things that we do as in partnership with, with non-traditional employment for women is we write into our, our contracts um, for signature projects, best efforts, and, and we require and look for uh, efforts made to have a certain percentage of women on site working uh, for each trade. Um, and it's something that we focus on and, and we try to make a best effort on to make sure that there are opportunities available for the women. At RxR, it was very important for us to get the signature project designation from new. We have two right now. Everyone at RxR was very excited to be able to qualify our projects under the new signature designation. New signature projects are um, a great way that uh, developers or clients, anybody who wants to create ways in which more women are hired, uh, so through working with uh, partners like contractors, they can create, they can set goals uh, higher than, let's say, 5 or 10%. They can make it a 15% goal or 20% goal and ask all the subcontractors to hire as many women as possible. The thing that is so great about a signature project is it's, it makes everybody feel good. The contractor feels great that they're, do, you know, they're hiring women. Clients feel great because they're creating um, these great opportunities for women. And the women themselves are, have this ability to work on these projects. So it's really a win-win situation for everybody. Today, New is celebrating those who are pushing forward a bold vision for our legacy and a tomorrow where our workforce reflects our communities. It's our pleasure to recognize News 2021 Equity Awards honoree Joseph Mizzi of Siami Construction for his steadfast commitment to our city. My name is Joseph Mizzi. I'm President and Chief Operating Officer of Siami Construction Company. Siami's construction has been uh, involved in, with New for a very long time. We've been a, uni a unionized construction manager for a very long time. And you know we always look for opportunities to partner with New on our most exciting and important projects. And one of our new signature projects 
is the Perlman Performing Arts Center at the World Trade Center. It's you know one of the most visible and important uh, projects in, in our city right now, and it's part of the World Trade Center complex. It's sitting adjacent to the World Trade Center Memorial, and while it's not the bi biggest building at the World Trade Center, it's amongst the most complex. It's amongst the most high, you know, highly designed buildings there, and you'll see some of it uh, in place for um, the 20th anniversary of 9-11-2021, and then late next year, the building will be far closer to completion and people will get to see it in its finished state. So we're, we're excited about it. When we set goals um, for diversity, equity, and inclusion, and, and, and when we partner with NEW for, for such goals, I think the relationship of NEW, Siami Construction, the workforce, and our clients and our subcontractors is, is how we work together to, um, to realize these goals. Um, and while now we're seeing a heightened uh, focus on this, this is something that we've been doing together on projects for many years. And so um, it, it, it was important to Siami Construction, it is important to Siami Construction, and, and it's very visible on our most important projects today. Construction is all about intention, action, and effort. Building a diverse workforce requires this same intention, action, and effort. Make it a priority, set goals, exceed them. News Ambassador Council embodies this determination as they work to ensure success for our tradeswomen. For this reason, we are pleased to honor the new Ambassador Council. Over 10 years ago, NEW launched our new Ambassador Council. Our Ambassador Council is made up of over 25, mostly women in our industry that give tirelessly to NEW, be it running a new signature project, making sure that our tradeswomen have opportunities not only to be successful, but to advance in their careers introducing others to new as an ambassador. Um, so many ways that we're really excited to celebrate them this year. The Ambassador Council's influence on signature projects is, comes from many different forms. So for myself, um, I'm an architect. I have wonderful clients that I've been able to introduce uh, to new and the idea that you can uh, hire tradeswomen uh, at a higher percentage, and I've never had a client come to me and say, oh, this is not something I wanna do. Everybody wants to participate. It makes everybody feel good. It's a win-win uh, across the board. And at the end of the day, you have a beautiful building, a beautiful space built by women who are motivated to do their work. Being involved with NEW, I see a lot more women in the industry, a lot more qualified women coming into the, into the industry. And one thing that, I, that I've learned, that any new graduate that I've met has been an incredibly hardworking and dedicated employee. And I just, I, I love working with new women because I see how much they're passionate about what they do and they bring a lot more, um, they just bring a lot more energy and, um, and passion for the construction industry. And it, it just helps elevate everything that we do. To be a member of the Ambassador Council is an honor because I get to sit alongside such powerful women in construction industries and construction careers who can make things happen. Being able to help another woman in this field is just exceptional because we need help. You know, new opens the door for us, but we need people and women in position to actually set the stage for us. And I'm so honored and I'm so happy that new has given me the opportunity to represent them, as well as represent other tradeswomen in non-traditional employment for women. The Ambassador Council is unbelievable. It's just made up of all different uh, individuals from different uh, organizations who have come together to support the board of NEW. And I admire them so much because such tremendous results on the part of the uh, Ambassador's Council. We're blessed to have the Ambassador's Council. One of my favorite parts of the luncheon is the hard hat appeal. We'd like to really keep that going, so please give generously today. Thanks. We stand in solidarity with our sisters. We pass a hat on a job site when someone is sick. We pass a hat on a job site when someone is in need. 
So please, find it in your heart and donate to Non-Traditional Employment for Women's Hard Hat Appeal. You can support New by supporting the Hard Hat Appeal. Please, donate to the Hard Hat Appeal. These dollars are very important to New and to future candidates who will seek a career in the New York City building and construction trades industry. As the pandemic began to spread throughout March 2020, no one could have foretold the ways in which this virus would change society. One industry that has remained open throughout lockdown and been forced to quickly innovate is construction. This industry embraced a virtual office, led the way in PPE recommendations, and was the first to demand an equitable recovery for women in New York City. So when the pandemic first hit on March 13th of 2020, uh, there were a lot of questions. No one knew how long construction was going to be down. But rightfully so, we lobbied along with the BCTC, the BTEA, CAGNI, BCA, to work with the mayor's office and the governor's office to really make lemonade out of lemons and to take a situation that could have gone very caustic and we turned it around to where the governor said construction is going to be an essential business and since then we've been working hand in hand with the agencies to make sure that people are protected people are safe and right now everybody is happy to be back to work on construction sites while women continue uh, to make some gains in the workplace um, we know for example that the pandemic hit women particularly women of color, um, disproportionately harder. And there's massive displacement now in this city uh, of women, particularly women of color, who are out of work and out of luck. And that's a prescription for disaster, not only for them, but for their children and their future generations. So I think that if new can, in the post-pandemic world, um, sort of reinvigorate its effort to go to communities, and provide that helping hand that my mom was able to provide um, in 1978 to, to women um, in the inaugural years. I think that ONU has the power to you know, revitalize its mission in the post-pandemic world by taking these displaced um, communities and giving them a helping hand and putting them into the high paying jobs. Because we know that while women are first fired often, they're last hired. And when many organizations have closed their doors during the pandemic, New is still here, New will be here. And we really, really, really encourage people to reinvent themselves and look at the other opportunities because this is the only female apprenticeship program in New York City, you know, and it's here to help and it's here, they're here to stay and it's a game changer. New has been as amazing as ever this past year, and oh, what a year it has been. We pivoted quickly to a virtual environment, then moved as soon as we could to a hybrid environment. Tradeswomen are back in our shop, like the one you see here behind me, and out in the field as well, and we've continued to support them during these times, and we're also excited for the opportunities ahead the additional opportunities in infrastructure, in the green economy, in the building trades, and the opportunities for continued training, both hands-on and now virtual as well. When the pandemic hit, um, I don't think any of us thought it was gonna last this long. So we just proceeded in such a way that we would be able to keep just, day just regular daytime things continuing and moving forward. But when we realized it was moving and not allowing us to come back into the office, we had to make that shift in terms of bringing our hands-on program into a virtual world. The biggest challenge was converting a fully hands-on program, which this is what we do at New, into something that's virtual and still be able to hold the integrity of what we do and to be able to continue the message, more importantly, help the women get their careers in the trades. 
Neil took a big leap and created a brand new training program, which was our Green Collar Prep program in February 2021. It was our first new program in a few years and our students were so excited about doing the program. The goal is to help our students connect with green construction employment and sustainability work. So we were able to bring in trades math, but kind of enhanced a little bit more, bringing in that sustainability factor to it. So far, it has exceeded every expectation that I had. Um, it makes me want to do better for the students and create and come up with new things for them because we created a whole new program in the middle of a pandemic and we knocked it out the park. New York City needs to recover and it needs to be equitable. And what that looks like is the creation of jobs and projects and careers. New York City is at a critical moment and time where the economy is starting to come back, confidence is beginning to build, vaccines are beginning to be implemented in, in a widespread basis. And now is the time for New York City to really have a robust plan to rebuild, create good family sustaining careers in the construction industry. Continuing to increase the number of women in the trades and in the industry is critical. We know that while we've been providing jobs in the hundreds each year, we really have made a very small dent in the amount of women in the trades. So for me, equitable for us at NEW means it's no longer non-traditional employment for women. It is employment for women. I think going forward for non-traditional employment for women is a reaffirmation of how we make it bigger, better, and faster to get women into the workforce. And NU is already in great position to support uh, the advancement of the equity of women, and not only women, just diversity, DE&I, in, in the construction industry. We still have a ways to go to increase the percentages for the true equity of what women can provide in the construction workforce. I had a client several years ago who said to me, Jay, the more women you have on a project, whether they're in the trades or whether they're in a management role, the project will be better. And at AECOM, it's very important for us to have ED&I, ESG, those are the buzz, buzzwords now in a publicly traded company, and they mean something to us as an organization. And having women in the construction trades, both as labor, as management, back of house, front of house, electricians, steam fitters, laborers, carpenters. It's important for us because we need more women in the industry. The opportunities uh, for tradeswomen now, I think, are boundless. The pandemic has exposed um, health and wealth gaps, but it also exposed something that we all probably already knew, that there were inequities um, for women in, in some of the trades in, in the construction industry. And the pandemic coupled with the social justice kind of push, a crisis that has resulted, has created, I think, a, a, a critical inflection point where there will be tremendous opportunities for women coming into our industry and having meaningful roles, not only in the field, but also in the office. Many tradeswomen worked on essential projects throughout the pandemic. And I have to say, you know, we always knew that uh, workers are essential, but I think the pandemic really, really brought to the forefront, not only in the construction industry, but in, in other industries as well, what is essential workers really mean. And what that really means is that all workers are essential. And during that period of time, many women left their homes, left their children to go to work on essential projects. I give them a great deal of applause and praise for doing that. Labor unions are also essential to reducing economic equality while providing workers with the voice and the power to obtain living wages and pathways to the middle class. Union leaders such as our labor honoree Peter Myers have stood up for workers and tradeswomen's rights across New York City 
And over the years, New has forged strong and meaningful partnerships with the labor unions in New York City, including Iron Workers Local 580. They're proud to recognize Peter Myers this year. My name is Peter Myers. I am the business manager, financial secretary, treasurer of Iron Workers Local 580. I am humbled to be here today being honored by New. I've chose the trades because I was always a more of a hands-on type of guy that liked working with his hands as opposed to an office setting. So the building trades offered me the best opportunity. I was chosen to go into the apprentice class in 1985, and uh, it's been the best decision I've ever made. My organization is Iron Workers Local 580. We are the ornamental and architectural iron workers in the five boroughs, Westchester and Long Island. We are responsible for the skin of the building, what we call a curtain wall, and all the miscellaneous iron within the building, staircases, railings, things of that nature. A part of my job detail is to uh, initiate and fill out paperwork with all the new apprentices that come in. And probably about 15 years ago, we noticed some females coming in and we started asking where they were coming from and they told us from this organization, no. Upon the initiation of these, the women into our organization, we get to see them down the union hall, dispatching them to jobs, seeing them at union meetings. It was a pleasant sight to see them grow within the industry. One young woman, I had the pleasure of enrolling into our organization and doing paperwork, had a lot of get up and go in her. And I guess three years ago, I was at her apprentice graduation and I just recently ran into her and she is a foreman on one of the biggest jobs in New York City right now. And it was, uh, it was pleasant to talk to her and see how she has grown and her family has grown. And uh, it, it makes the job rewarding. It's really important that we can count on you to do your part to donate to the Hard Hat Appeal. Please join me today in donating to the Hard Hat Appeal. You can support NEW now by giving to our Hard Hat Appeal. A donation to NEW today will help a future local 580 apprentice realize their dream. So please, donate to the Hard Hat today. The importance of having women on the work site and in the industry is critical now more than ever. And I believe that New is an organization that can provide that needed component of diversity in our workforce. New has been around for over 40 years and has really been in the forefront of providing women an opportunity to pursue a career that they love. I believe today that equality, gender, and inclusion that has taken on a very important role, New was ahead of that 40 years ago. And I am very proud to be a board member and to represent New in my business. Companies should hire new graduates because you are getting the cream of the crop, the preeminent group coming out, the, the focus on training, but also the heart and the passion that comes out of our new graduates is above any other that you'll find. That kind of passion and heart and mind and soul, that kind of putting your shoulder into everything you do, translates into a phenomenal work environment and a more productive work environment. New really uh, allowed me to find really the best part of myself, to really take a hard look at myself and, and, and recognize what I could do to make a difference. And new just grounds me each and every day and reminds me of what I have to do in order to do my part to make sure that women have uh, the same equal footing in this business. And we now turn to my favorite part, a long honored tradition and a highlight of news luncheon, hearing the story of our tradeswomen honoree. Each year, New recognizes a dedicated tradeswoman who, by achieving success in her own career, has paved the way for future women in construction to reach new heights in the trades. This year, we honor Keisha Spradley, an electrician with IBEW Local 3, whose story is an inspiration for us all. 
My name is Keisha Spradley, and I'm a journey woman with IBW Local Number 3, and this is my 11th year in the union. I'm an electrician with EJ Electric. Uh, most of the work I do is running conduit to uh, panels, powering uh, up the building. I was first told about New through a friend of a friend. We were having a conversation about how my father was an electrician uh, in Florida when I grew up, and I wanted to be an electrician. He thought that's the last thing he wants his daughter to do is be an electrician. And I mentioned that I always wished I kind of tried that out, and she told me about New. And I said, you know, I'm going to check that program out. So when I received the call from New, I'd actually been waiting for about two years. That was a bit of a hiring freeze for Local 3. And she calls me and I was sitting in my desk and she said, hey, I'm from New, are you still interested in Local 3? And I'm literally looking around at my office and these people I'm talking to and I said, can I give you a call back tomorrow? She said, yes, well, you have to call me back right away. I was like, absolutely. And I called and about two days later, I started New at Night. I went through the program, I did a little carpentry, a little plumbing, but I knew the electrical is what I wanted to do. It was a little terrifying, but I knew it was what I wanted to at least try. I knew I had to at least give it a go. And if I didn't make it, then I could look back and say, but I tried. But I couldn't just not try. So I went for it. I went through the apprenticeship. Uh, it was five and a half years. It was, it was a tough apprenticeship. I had to work during the day and to go to theory school at night, but I did it. And here I am, 11 years later. Um, I've been a foreman on five different sites. Uh, the union paid for me to finish my bachelor's degree, and now I'm working on my master's at NYU in, on construction management. The new program is probably the best decision I've made in my life. It has given me a level of financial stability that I otherwise wouldn't have. Joining Local 3, it's, it's exactly what I wanted. I mean, you know, everyone talks about the money, which is great. It allows me to travel a lot more than I did before, uh, but it's a second family. We have a, a culture of educational fun that is just, it's just phenomenal. It's, it's you know, bar none to any college. With the, type of, uh, with the type of training that I can uh, receive there, the type of certifications that I can receive there. I, I don't think uh, if I'd realized how wonderful this would turn out for me, I probably would have done this a lot sooner. Um, I feel very blessed for the opportunities that I've been given. I've had an opportunity to work in the subways. I have worked on bridges. I have worked in tunnels. Uh, this is my fourth hospital that I've worked in. I've worked on uh, power stations, lighting. I like my job and I get paid well to do it. I don't think there's a better job than that. I like the people that I work with. I like the company that I work with. I know my local has my back on everything. Uh, the, the other women I meet in the trays, they're my friends. We have dinner together, we go to movies together, we watch each other's kids. So I know that I am where I am supposed to be right now. And I have new to thank for that. The first thing we say when we see a new woman on the site is, hey, how are you? Here's where the bathroom is, and here's the code. The next thing we always ask is, did you come in through new? Because 90% of the time, they did come in through new. Following the new program, I got into a welding program because I had to keep the tools in my hand. I didn't want to lose any skills. I had to keep going. And when quarantine happened, everything stopped. And when I was ready to go back to work, new was there to put me in my first construction position prior to this. I did home improvements. I worked with a contractor for actually an all-woman company. And I couldn't imagine going from quarantine to the elevator industry. So that was another alliance, like another stepping stone to get where I wanted to be. 
The new has been a great help to me after I've got in with um, Union Tools, books, anything that I've needed. Uh, personally, if I go to new, they would they would give it to me, and they have. And it's just a great to have, like I said, that family oriented. It's not just like you go through this new program and they send you off and you're on your way. No, you have the, the, these are people who are here with you if you're 10 years in the union, five years, even two months. They, they, you guys have been here, and I, like I said, I greatly appreciate it. And you have allowed for me, people like me to have an opportunity. Well, when I graduated new, I graduated with a few women that I have came into contact with during my union. I see them at different sites, you know, doing different great things, doing wonderful things on different sites, different trades. You know, all the women from New are excelling in life. They are all, we all get together, we are all close friends, and New really brought us together. I am always talking about New. <laughs> I have talked to people on the bus. I have talked to people in the, in stores. I have talked to people in my church. Like, oh, you should join you. Not sure what you want to do, go to new. You can try all the different trades. You can get into carpentry. You can get into electrical. You know, we push in this country so much about going to college, but there are many avenues to success in this country. And new shows you that to just see somebody else that looks like you and that, that, that want to be here, it's actually good. But if the women are here and it, 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 it brings a, a full thing like, hey, it's not just me that has the same mindset of wanting to come to work and uh, pursue this as a career, it's another sister that does. And that's actually why I do it. Um, my stress and everything that I've been through is really not for me, it's to help the person behind me. It is so exciting and so encouraging to work on a site that has so many women on it. Um, when I first started, my very first site, there was only one other woman on the site. And her father was a Local 3 electrician, so she became a Local 3 electrician. And now when I come onto a site 10 years later, and there's almost 30 women, and by the way, 28 of them came in through new, that is so fulfilling and is so motivating. It reminds me that everything that I do, there's some women coming behind me. Yeah, it's, it's very fulfilling to me that, that I could get to come to work to do actually what I love and I'm learning every day. Now for me, coming into the industry, I already had some college, I already had some experience in corporate America. So I knew that when I came in, that I will have other options and other avenues. And so coming into the door, I knew that this, this was going to be it for me. This was going to be my last career choice was going to be in Local 3. And New made that possible. So I always encourage other women to just go for it. Now more than ever, we need to ensure that the good work of New continues moving forward in a strong fashion. Please consider donating to our hard hat appeal. Let's fill this hard hat up so that we continue the work that we're setting out to do. You can support New and a future tradeswoman by giving to the hard hat appeal. Please contribute to New Non-Traditional Employment for Women. Thank you very much. It has been such an honor to share this broadcast with such amazing leaders, advocates, and accomplished honorees. Each is forging the way in creating an equitable recovery for New York City. New recognizes this moment as a once-in-a-generation opportunity to improve workforce diversity. Now is the time, as there is more opportunity than ever for all of us to be part of the solution and to hire new tradeswomen. With your ongoing commitment and support, we'll continue to connect women with sustainable careers and growth opportunities well beyond the pandemic. On behalf of NEW and our community of tradeswomen, thank you so much for spending time with us today. Be well, stay safe, and see you in 2022.